How's it going guys? So today is another really cool geometry nodes tutorial. We're gonna be making this animation right here. So I'm gonna show you how to make those glitchy uh, kind of grids. We're gonna make them loop. And if you want to, we can run a camera through it to make it look even crazier and do some really cool compositing stuff. So we will get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so today we're using the brand new 3.1.0. So if you don't have that, I think all of this stuff is compatible with slightly older geometry nodes versions. So we're just gonna go ahead and get in a plane. Here we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit RX 90 and we're gonna flip it right there. That flips it on the X by 90 degrees. Let's hop into geometry nodes and get going. I'm gonna kill this window and go with this right here. So I'm gonna click new, I'm gonna click this input, delete it, and we're gonna get in a mesh primitives grid. Let's plug mesh into geometry nodes. Now we have this guy. So we're gonna go, we're gonna do two and 3.5. And that's gonna give us this almost 16 by nine looking thing. Um, and then we're gonna go here and look at our vertices. So I'm gonna go up here and click on the wireframe view. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring my vertices up to like this and bring my vertices up to here until they're square. They're a little bit rectangular right now. So if I bring them in, 27 and 45 look about right for me. This is the grid that we're now gonna build on. One thing I'm noticing is here, right here in the dead center, you're seeing these um, cross section basically going in the middle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this and click that and make this in the center. Cause when I do run my camera through it, I want uh, the camera just to be able to run straight through it without hitting things. So that allows that to happen. Now we're gonna go ahead and start the rigorous building process of this grid. So this is kind of our base. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A search and type in instance. Instance on points, click there. Mesh primitives and we're gonna get an icosphere. And then I'm gonna subdivide this to three and plug that into instance. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and search smooth, set, uh, set sheet smooth, plug that there. And then here on radius, I'm gonna bring my radius down a little bit and we'll, we're gonna want a little bit more control later, but this is kind of where we're at. Now let's get a join geometry node because we're gonna do another thing, basically create a wireframe. So plug this here, and then I'm gonna get a mesh to curves. So mesh to curve, we'll put that down here and we're gonna plug this grid into the mesh and the mesh into the uh, join geometry. So now you're gonna see that right there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a curve to mesh. Curve to mesh, plug that there and get a, a circle curve, curve circle specifically. Plug that into profile and then radius, we're gonna do 0 0.001, there we have it. And then we can also bring the radius down on the spheres, there we go. Now we've created very quickly a grid in geometry nodes that is totally editable. So if you see, you can kind of stretch it out like this or you can stretch it out like that or you can add more faces. It's a really cool kind of editable grid you can do for just backgrounds and things. And then now we're gonna go ahead and create a little bit of variation here. So what I'm gonna do is see how this string is plugged into this instance to points. We wanna break that up. So I'm gonna get a separate geometry node and then we're gonna get a noise texture. So we're gonna get a noise texture and a color ramp. And what we're going to basically be doing is we're going to be breaking up the geometry here that plugs into here so we can play with where spheres are placed. So I'm going to go from linear. So right here, I'm going to go from linear to constant. And then factor goes into here. I'm just bring this to about the midpoint and plug color into selection. And you'll notice if I play with my scale, 
all that stuff is happening. I'm going to do my radius at 0.015 on the icosphere. And then we're going to go from 3D to 4D. And then on the W, now you can kind of animate those coming in and out. And then you can just kind of bring that out like this, play with the W. And it's really cool, especially once we add um, emission materials to this, it's going to look awesome. So there we go. We did that. Now let's go ahead and do one more thing. So let's go ahead and bring this join geometry down and let's get in a translate. So actually a transform, not translate, sorry. And then we're gonna plug uh, this grid that's plugged into those two things and we'll plug that into the geometry and plug this into the join geometry. And now we've kind of created this whole thing. What I'll do is actually uh, go here and turn on my cavity and kind of see everything better. That's what we're working with. But what this transform is gonna allow me to do is on the Z, is to move it forward right here. So if you play with your Z transform, it's gonna move it forward, which is what we want. And then now we're gonna go ahead and get a instance on points. Instance on points, doing that. Let's go ahead and just get another grid, brand new grid, plug mesh into instance, and then I'm gonna go ahead right here on the grid size, I'm gonna click and drag and then just bring the scale down like this. Now we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the spheres here, which is take this grid, which is take this grid here, and I'm gonna go ahead and get a separate geometry node. Separate geometry, I'm gonna plug it right there. So the grid that plugs into the transform, put that separate geometry node there. I'm gonna highlight my color ramp and my noise texture. I'm gonna bring it down so we just kind of see it and plug color into selection. And now when we play with the W, both the spheres here and the cubes here are moving around. Now, one mistake I made, which I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out of the selection here. I'm gonna leave that color ramp up there. I'm gonna hit Shift D on this color ramp plug the noise texture here and plug the color back into the selection because we want to be able to have this control. So we can use this color ramp for these squares and this color ramp for these circles. Again, we do want to have that control. Sometimes you don't need it, but we do want it here. So now we have this whole really cool animating grid. Um, now for me, this is too many cubes or planes for example. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to go ahead and take this grid, which is plugged into all three things. I'm going to duplicate it and just plug this one into the separate geometry down here. And then I'm just going to bring my size down. So I'm bringing my, I mean, sorry, my vertices. I, I don't like the amount of vertices here. So something like this, and then we can just go ahead and then on the grid, which is plugged into the instance to points, We'll just go ahead, click and drag and bring them up a little bit. And then you can just kind of play with your size here to kind of even out those grids. So we can just kind of play around with this. So bring up your vertices. So we can bring those vertices, something like, something like this. I forget how exactly I had it in my original animation, but it's definitely, definitely wanted it to be bigger. So that when I play with this W, we have bigger grids and then smaller dots behind it. That's what I originally wanted to do. And then we can go ahead and bring this farther in front. There we go. Now we have basically our grid. Let's go ahead and get a set material node. So SET material. Let's go ahead and make a new material. So click new right here, right here on principle go to um, emission. And then right over here, click that new material, which is called material 001 and then make it you know, slightly blue or any color you want. And then I'm gonna click on my camera icon, make sure you're in Eevee, I'm gonna click on Bloom. And that's what we want for that. And there we go, I'm gonna go to the render button, go to my world settings and bring that down to black. There we go, we've created a loop looking thing. <laughs> so this is that basically, what I'm gonna do now is loop the W animation. So I'm gonna hit shift and left click and just drag here so we can get some stuff to control both color ramps. So I'm gonna go ahead on this noise texture on the W and click zero. 
I'm gonna get a timeline. So right up here, click that plus icon, drag up here and get a timeline. In your preferences, make sure in the animation tab, you are at linear interpolation. So I'm gonna take this te noise texture and duplicate it. Now that both of them are the same, let's get a mix RGB, mix RGB. We're gonna go at 250 frames and I'm gonna hit the back arrow while I'm in the timeline go to frame zero. So I'm gonna bring this factor all the way over here. So I'm gonna hit I, hover over and hit I, go to the very end of frame 250 and drag it over and hit I. So then I'm gonna put the factor into color two. So now it's gonna basically this noise texture, I mean, sorry, the mix RGB is going to slide over within the time of 250 frames. So let's go back and hit the background of frame zero right here on this W, hit I, Go to the very end and I'm gonna type in one, enter, hit I. And then now that I'm over here at 250, let's start at zero. Click I, go to the end, back arrow to frame zero, negative one, and then hit I. And now you're gonna get a looping animation of both the spheres and this. So you're getting something pretty cool already. And then here on the cubes, maybe a few less cubes. And then maybe on this wireframe here, which is gonna be my uh, circle curve, radius 0 0.0005, there we go. 0 0.0005 makes it nice and thin, which is what I want. And there we have it. Now we're done. If you wanna go ahead and hit the tilde key to click the front, Shift A, get my camera, and then I can go ahead, go back, I'm hit G, click back. And if you just wanna render this out like this as just an animated kind of sci-fi looking background, you can do that. But for me, I love doing that, going through, making it a cool loop. So we're gonna do that really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A and use my cube, um, the cube rule. So I'm gonna hit S5 on this plane and I'm gonna click on this guy, move it to be about right there. And then I'm gonna hit Alt D and then move it over here. So we want basically these two at an equal length apart. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these two, hit M, new collection and call it loop. Okay. And then now what we can do is I'm hit Shift A, collection instance loop, and then holding down control, move this over. If you've never made loops before, the reason why we made this big plane, is so that, that we can visually see when one starts and stops. That's the most important part. And then I'm gonna hit Alt D again, holding down control, snapping it, Alt D, go to the end, Alt D, go to the end. That's about enough. And then now we have this insanity. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit on, I'm gonna click on the camera right here in the transform settings. We're gonna to go to negative five, which is gonna place the origin right at the edge of our cube, or I mean our plane. I like to call it cube because it's fun to call it the cube rule, which is what I call it, but it's really the plane rule. Okay, so we're gonna go back to um, hit the back arrow to frame zero. I'm gonna click this right here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead again, hitting control, bring my camera to the end of the fourth instance right there. So on that line, which is 35, and I forgot to do something first. So put your camera back on negative five, click the end, so go to frame 250, and then again, go to the end of the fourth instance, which is 35M, click that, and now your camera is gonna fly through this. So if we look at the view, we're flying through this for some reason, it's lagging for me, and I'm not entirely sure why, but that's okay. It might be the echospheres. We now have our loop. I'm gonna click on this here on the plane and just go ahead and delete it. And then we do have a problem. This looks ugly. So what we're gonna go ahead and do and click on the, uh, click on the world icon right here on volume, go to principled volume and then bring your density down to however you like it. And then now we're just gonna run our camera straight through this. Now, if it's lagging for you, keep in mind, this is 12 frames a second. Um, it'll be quicker. So say if I go ahead and delete those instances, it will be quicker, not really. So just keep in mind, 
it's gonna be quicker. This is really kind of, what, half half the speed? It's gonna be a lot faster. But um, now that we're here, let's go ahead and do some compositing magic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the strength of my emission a little bit higher so that when my camera reaches right about here, it's going to glow. So right about there. And then bring my density to something like this. So now we have this animation. We can even go ahead in the camera settings and bring this focal length quite, a I mean, a lot farther out, something like this. And then now we have this animation going on. And it, again, it's a perfect loop. So what I'm gonna do now is hit the render button and we have this kind of boring looking grid. And what I'm gonna do is go here to compositing, click use nodes, I'm gonna hit shift A and get a viewer, plug image to image, and then hold down shift and right click and do that. Let's go ahead and get a lens distortion node and click on distort and then click fit and then distort it pretty heavily, something like this. So now this is all distorted like we want. What I'm gonna do now is get another lens distortion node, plug that there and put dispersion. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on projector and then bring that dispersion pretty high. So projector is gonna give you this weird RGB look. So if I zoom in here, that's what it's doing. So we'll go ahead and bring it back out. And then we're gonna go ahead and get one more. So I'm gonna get another lens distortion and use jitter and then put dispersion up and then jitter is just basically going to give you this very grainy look that I really love so if I bring it over you can see how it gets that kind of grainy look I'm a really big fan of that so I'm gonna go back to fit jitter dispersion and click on fit as well and that's really just going to make this look insane and then now if we go to rendering, this is how our loop is going to look. And um, you're pretty much done. So now you just have this crazy looking weird loop. And say if you wanna go ahead, oh, my cat just jumped in my lap. Say if you wanna go ahead and go to another random frame like right here, if we click on the render image, it's gonna go ahead and add that compositing and it really just changes the whole vibe of your whole animation. So that's how you do that. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our export and be done. So if you wanna just use a PNG sequence, you can just go ahead and pick where you wanna save your file, render it out. Because it's Eevee, you're not really gonna crash. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to FFmpeg video. That's gonna compile and export for you, like a video. And then we're gonna go from encoding to MP4 and then output quality to perceptually lossless and then go to render, render animation. And when you're done, you'll have something like this. So there you go, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you had fun with this stuff. I hope you learned some really cool things. Again, if you want to check out real-time materials, that is linked in the description, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.